Thanks, everyone. Um, I know how uh, busy these hackathons get, so I'm going to keep this short and sweet, but I hope that uh, it gets the juices flowing for all of you a little bit. Um, so I first want to thank Joe for inviting me to come and uh, give a talk here. Um, forgive me also if I'm a little bit slow. I'm just getting off of an eight-hour flight. I came here straight from the airport, so I'm going to try my best to be uh, concise and also not ramble on too much. So um, what I thought I would do is I'll tell you a little bit about this whole movement about opening up the space industry. And I think one of the main reasons that all of you are here actually is because there's been this movement, movement over the last decade or so especially of trying to break open and break the shackles on the space industry and open it up to more mainstream uh, applications firstly, but also developers, engineers, and even non-technical people. So I think um, as a consequence, you've seen a lot of press and marketing over the last uh, decade, but there's actually a lot of interesting stuff going on within this new space sector. And don't ask me what new space actually is. Actually, don't ask anybody, I would say, because nobody really knows what new space is. We're all just doing it. And I think uh, the interesting thing is the industry is very much in a formative stage right now. So this is a good moment to get in at the ground floor and, um, and you know, work on something impactful. So I want to tell you about a project that I'm working on uh, called Sat Search, and it actually came out of a, a hackathon similar to this that was held in Bremen, Startup Week in Space in 2015 in April. And I went there with a friend of mine just with an idea of being an aerospace engineer myself. I'd come a, hit a, uh, a hurdle a number of times in my work, and we just decided to go to this hackathon and see whether we could hack on an idea to solve this problem, and that has turned into a startup actually over the last couple of years. And the thrust behind the startup is essentially this idea of opening up uh, the space sector. So I don't have to convince you all about this, but the industry is growing. Now, there's a lot of different people who will tell you different things about the rate of growth in the industry, but one thing is, I think, clear, and that's that the industry is growing. Um, in fact, there's been a lot of uh, attention paid to companies like SpaceX and Planet and various others who've uh, done a lot to move, move the needle forward. In fact, over the next 10 years, there's projections that there are going to be over 5,000 satellites launched. And I should tell you that there's approximately 1,000 operational on orbit right now. So this is really order of magnitude change in the industry. And with that, there's a lot of opportunities as well and a lot of challenges that have to be addressed. Um, there's over 1,000 new space companies that have been created in the last 10 years. So even though you might only have heard of SpaceX and... Uh, uh, Blue Origin and um, planetary resources, the extent of the new space industry is actually quite boggling, mind-boggling. And in fact, we're slowly seeing investors being attracted to the space as well. I had an interesting discussion earlier about how I would interpret that at the moment. I think it's going to take another decade before people really understand what you can do with this technology and also with the data that you can derive from satellites. But there's been over $15 billion spent already in the last decade. And this is not just small companies and groups of people doing this. It started sort of in that realm and with academia involved as well. But now, especially in the last five years, you're seeing a lot of large established players getting in uh, to this new space business as well. A good example is the OneWeb constellation. Does anyone here know the OneWeb constellation? Yes. Okay, so OneWeb is one of these large constellations that's being pitched for uh, communication everywhere. So internet everywhere. Uh, 4K video on your phone, wherever you go on the planet. And OneWeb has gotten substantial investments from companies like Airbus, Hughes, and SoftBank. So what I'm trying to explain to you here is that there is capital-seeking uh, solutions in the market right now. Most importantly is there's been a, a number of cases of exits and co consolidation in the market, and that's really interesting investors because investors don't really understand the space yet, pun intended. Uh, but the interesting thing is that um, with a number of these exits, investors are, I think, starting to learn that you can actually put your mon money into this industry and it's not a bottomless pit. Um, so the, I guess one of the famous examples in the last year is a planet's acquisition of Skybox Imaging or Terra Bella from Google. And there's a lot of these kinds of ventures and joint ventures that are uh, popping up all around the world. Maybe one of the most interesting things, and this is a little bit invisible, I think, if you're outside the sector, but if you're inside it, for sure, it's very clear that it's, the industry is also extending to places it's never been before. So there's a lot of new actors in the space industry. 
Um, a very interesting one is Luxembourg. Luxembourg is the hub of space, uh, space mining. Uh, there's a whole bunch of reasons why that is, but there's a lot of companies that are basically setting up their headquarters in Luxembourg at the moment. The UAE is also another very good example. They have declared that by in 100 years, they're going to have a, col a colony on Mars. And they're, they're backing this with a lot of investment in basic infrastructure and technology. So um, within the, uh, the context of all of this, what we're trying to focus on is this idea of opening up the sector. And so why open? Well, open is really, I would argue, transformed tech in general. So if you look at tech and you look at companies like GitHub and Bitbucket, what they've done for uh, the tech industry and a lot of other sectors is pretty incredible within the last 10 years. And what we've seen also uh, in rec recently is the uptake uh, by large enterprise. So, of course, companies like uh, Mozilla and Google, but Microsoft and Facebook investing really also in open source ecosystems and technology. And beyond it just being a tool for marketing and hiring, I think people are also understanding that it really serves as a platform for growth. One of the best examples for me, I think, is the way the React uh, ecosystem has suddenly just popped out of nowhere. Um, and there are a lot of people contributing towards this, uh, in, um, this ecosystem, even though it started at a large uh, corporation. And our thesis at SatSearch is essentially that open is vital to new space. So to power sort of this wave of enthusiasm, um, there needs to be more openness in the sector. And this really speaks towards uh, the goal of enabling rapid, low-cost spacecraft development, mission development, and finally, data acquisition. Um, open also provides a new channel for collaboration. The industry, by nature, hasn't been very open. It's been very closely related to the defense sector, of course. So people are only sort of starting to crack open that that mindset and looking at space as a place where you can talk about things openly, you can do business openly, and you can collaborate. And I think what's really the crux of all of this is the idea of achieving trust and resilience of space systems through the many eyes principle, which has already you know, transformed uh, the software industry in a lot of different ways. And finally, open is really the way to uh, make sure that we continue this wave of opening up the sector to new actors and allow people to bootstrap themselves into uh, the space sector, even if they don't have a legacy uh, like the main spacefaring nations. And in fact, there's a few companies that really um, have, have highlighted sort of this move towards open. Planet, of course, uh, based out of San Francisco. Uh, CubeOS is an interesting company. They built uh, flight software, open source flight software. They recently got a um, a fairly um, significant investment, and they're based in Texas, and then SpaceX as well. And SpaceX has also open sourced a bunch of designs, and they're sort of moving towards that new methodology of building space. So when we're talking about space uh, being open, what can we actually open up? Well, uh, there's a few different things you can talk about. One is software itself. So simulation software for engineering design, for instance, flight software, ground software, then there's data, so data APIs, stuff that you guys, I think, here are, are working with uh, this weekend as well, remote sensing data, but also test data and spacecraft parts data, data sheets. And then on the hardware side, uh, the hardware itself, CAD models, designs, uh, circuit board designs, and then 3D printer models. All of these things can, in some sense, be opened up. And so what you see here is actually an entire technology stack with different elements that can be opened up. And what I've highlighted here in orange are the ones that we're working on. We're working on uh, the simulation software side and spacecraft parts data. And there's a whole bunch of people in the sector working on different parts, but there's uh, parts of this stack, but there's actually a lot of areas of the stack that are not being worked on. So there's open areas here, actually, I would say, for a bunch of new startups. So what are the problems that we're trying to solve? Well, one of the main things is because of this growth of new space sector, the supplier landscape for spacecraft parts is quite fragmented. So you have companies uh, here in the US and in Europe and in China, Japan and India, but also in all of these new spacefaring countries in Egypt and Costa Rica and Australia, uh, in the UAE, and trying to find specs turns out to be an incredibly difficult problem. And this is one that's been solved in the electronics industry over and over. You have to, if you just look at websites like DigiKey and Mouser, there's really easy ways that you can filter and sort and search for parts. And although this is actually rocket science, the way people do this at the moment right now, the way I have been doing it for the last 10 years, 
is really sitting and scrolling through PDF documents, 20, 30 page PDF documents, trying to look for one number, trying to look for the mass or the operating temperature or something like that. And so this really leads to inefficient engineering and procurement and also costly errors. And it's becoming a bigger problem because the sector is also growing and is becoming more and more fragmented. On the other side, we're also looking at simulation tools, and I'll talk about the integration of the two uh, in a second, but my background is really in simulation, modeling and simulation and orbital mechanics. And uh, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I can tell you some of that, uh, what I've done. I've got an open source project already out that I built during my PhD. And one of the things that you notice in the space industry is the software is generally not easy to use, and it's also not really hackable. So it's not friendly for these kind of environments. It's not really meant for people to get into the, uh, the, the, the source code itself and hack around with it. A lot of the tools can't be audited at all. They're just black boxes. And as a consequence, there's just a lot of reinvention of the wheel going on. So it's quite an inefficient process, actually, in the sector at the moment. So what are we building? Well, this came out of actually the hackathon that we were at. Um, on the left here, uh, SatSearch itself, uh, our website is essentially, we're trying to build, you can say, the DigiKey for the space sector. So the idea is you should be able to find any parts, any suppliers, and in fact, ultimately across the entire value chain uh, through our website and ultimately also through an, our API, which we're hoping to release soon. In addition to that, uh, we're building uh, under an umbrella called Open Astro, a series of open source, low level simulation libraries so that you can pick them up like uh, building blocks and piece them together to do en uh, high level engineering design. So if you've got a concept for a satellite mission or something that you can quickly iterate um, and figure out what the feasibility is of your, your mission before you deep dive into the design. So very quickly, so SatSearch is essentially this Alibaba or DigiKey of the, the sector. The idea is we're, we're building parametric search and it's essentially targeting this idea of global supply chain management, which at the moment is quite difficult just because of how fragmented the sector is. Ultimately out of that, there, we are even running the site now for, for a year um, and collecting analytics. You see a lot of different things emerging, trends, what people are searching for, where people come from as well, where they're searching for stuff. We've seen all kinds of countries that I didn't even know people were thinking about space. So this just goes to show how global the industry is. And Open Astro is much more really this GNU scientific library sort of approach. So open source, low level libraries. The idea is for it to be community driven, uh, well tested and documented and exposing low level libraries. So you can get into really the core and, and hack, it, hack it as much as you want. So all of this put together, the grand vision for this is something that we're calling integrated mission design. So I guess some of you know this little irritating paperclip guy, right? He used to be there, I don't know if, I, I'm not a Windows user, so I don't know if he's there anymore in Microsoft Word, but he used to kind of hang around and when you were doing something, you know, the, they would try to detect if you were trying to figure something out and then would give you a bunch of tips and uh, links so that you could try and get help. So if you can think, the same thing, a little less annoying and a little bit more effective for spacecraft design and mission design. That's ultimately what we're targeting. So the idea is having this parts database that's machine readable, semantic um, uh, specifications, a mission archive, and a whole bunch of other data sources and pooling it with the simulation tools in the loop. The idea ultimately for us, this is sort of the vision maybe a few years from now, is to have um, machine le learning algorithms sit on top of this, take high level requirements and uh, essentially help the engineer generate configurations for mission concepts. And this whole idea is that missions are becoming more and more complicated. Elon Musk wants to send stuff to Mars, right? Send people to Mars. This is super complicated engineering. 